four-year-olds. A school. Two <laughs> Five-year-olds. Six-year-olds. I don't like you. Who cares? <laughs> They're at a pivotal age. Do you like mine? Don't laugh. <laughs> it's not funny. This is where futures are formed. This is the president of the USA. This is a unique opportunity to see the most crucial stage of a child's development. What they're learning now is the blueprint for adult life. These children have come from all over the country to a school where every corner has been rigged with cameras Mom. and wired for sound. Yep, back home. Bye-bye. Previously on The Secret Life of Six-Year-Olds... Oh, please don't kiss me, Eloisa. Yes. <laughs> Eloisa caused a commotion amongst the boys. Beatrice struggled with competition. Don't worry, I think we'll win next time. And found a companion in Elvin. I'm going to the beach so I can get you some seashells. Love from your best friend, Elvin. <laughs> It's late August, and after a two-week break, the six-year-olds are returning. Observing the children are Professor Paul Howard Jones and Dr. Elizabeth Kilby. And looking after them are teachers Kate and Phil. Dad! Yes, Casper! Oh, it's nice to see you again, mate. It's nice to see you again. I hope you'll be coming back. This week, some new faces have joined the group, including Poppy. What's your name? Oh, yeah. Caitlin. That's yeah. a nice name. I can do a cell five. Ooh, it's really like a clap, really. Cell five. Woo. And Layla. I got a little sister that punched me in the eye. Ooh. It's always really interesting to see how after a break the children are going to welcome each other, because at this age they've got far better ability to continue the notion of friendship. Hello, everybody. <laughs> they are remembering. They're greeting each other, and there's lots of real kind of social graces going on. It's real currency to start this relationship again on a strong footing. In their first week together, Elvin and Beatrice were inseparable. Beatrice, this is for you for me. Skittles. Thank you. Who was your best friend here? Alvin. Not Alvin in the chipmunks. <laughs> Who do you think you might make some friendship bracelets for? I'll probably make one for Beatrice. Yeah. I'm going right, to make for whatever friends you want to make. Why do you like Beatrice? Because she's kind and helpful. Oh, this is yours, look. Wow. Thanks, Beatrice. I managed to, to, to put two on. Wow. Thank you. What's your name? Austin. Austin, don't be my friend. Okay. Don't be his as well. I'm the boss of the gang. And this is Casper. I'm the boss of the gang. For me, what makes six-year-olds really so significantly different from being four and five is where your language skills have developed to and what you can then do with them. My mum is 50. My mum is 59. My mum's my older than all of your mums. No, my granddad is 100. My, my nanny's 104. My granny is about 1,000 now. My granny's like 200 and 1,000. My no, she's not. Yes, she is. Verbal interaction is yeah. now the theatre of their, their cooperation, yes. but also of the conflict as well. Yes. It's not a, a matter of stealing toys or pushing people out of the way. Yeah. They know if they're going to win, they've yes. got to win the argument. It's the afternoon, and the children are painting pictures of each other's families. OK, that's enough, that's enough. My mum's hair's not that long. <laughs> OK. All my family's skin colour is black. 
I think you mean brown, not black. Yeah, brownie. Yeah, a bit brownie. How about her lips? She usually puts loads of lipstick on, so I can't tell. I think this task is a real challenge for children of all ages, but for six-year-olds in particular, we're requiring them to ask questions, ask the correct questions, listen to the responses, and then translate that into something they're representing. OK, so what colour eyes does your dad have? Blue. <laughs> Same as your mum. Yeah. So are them two like brothers and sisters then? Yeah. My dad wears high heels. <laughs> Now it's Cash's turn to paint Caitlin's family. Don't you know? I don't want her to have a nose. Sorry, she's got a hell of a nose. A big, long nose that goes down to that. Whoa! Oh, look at my big nose, everyone. It's quite sensitive, isn't it? Because yeah. you are painting your friend's r relative. Yeah and your friend might be sensitive about that. I don't want my mum to have arms. No, sure has or hands. Oh, okay. What? She doesn't oh, deserve she them since she's always on her phone. My mum's always on her phone. It don't matter, I'm giving her arms. Parents take note. Yeah, they they've both got something yeah. in common. Their parents spend too much time on the phone. Her arms look nothing like that. Wait, I'm gonna do something. Funny. I'm gonna give her a black cat. <laughs> no. Not really. I'm gonna give her a black cat. No. Can I not tell you anything else? Okay. I'm gonna just do your mum. <laughs> black cat. Yo, look at my black cat. Oh, stop being rude. I'm, that's not being rude, Caitlin. I'm telling you off. Well, Mum's going to tell you off. I am really turned it off now. <laughs> what happens, Caitlin, if someone doesn't do what you want them to do? Well, in a game, they would have to go to jail. Caitlin lives in Chingford, East London, and has two brothers. Mum Kylie is an online developer and Dad Michael runs a chimney business. This is my special princess box. She is a little bossy boots. Um, she even bosses me around. She does boss Doesn't me she? around, yeah. All the time. All the time. <laughs> the daddy's girl. If I go to a disco, I just have to wear this dress because it's so pretty. My brothers are always playing together at home and I don't really have anyone to play with. We should play dress up. Who's dressed up the best? I don't know. Because me and her dad aren't together, I told her mummy's not having any more babies and mummy's finished. So she did ask if we could swap one of her brothers for a sister. If she's losing her temper, she will stomp her feet, she will scream. Do you ever annoy your big brother, do you think? But generally, she manages to hold her own corner and get people to come around to her way of thinking. <laughs> Cash was being green! No, I wasn't, Caitlin. Stop lying. You were! No, I wasn't. Because you've done a black hat on my mum and I didn't want you to. No, no, you're not coming to my birthday. It's going to be really fun. But you're not coming to my birthday. I didn't even want to come because where you go for your birthday? Teddy bear workshop where you can make your own teddy bear. Well, I'm going to a bigger place. I'm having two birthday parties. I'm having three birthday parties. No, you've just been giving more room. How am I being rude? Is that being rude, Casper? I'm having more birthdays. I'm having three. Is that being rude? This is why Caitlin loses the argument, because actually she runs out of words. Yes. Her emotions become so yes. strong that she, she can't have anything to say. She, all she, she can only express herself with a... Yeah. Ah! <laughs> and that's the point where she thinks, I'm going to have to leave. Yeah. This is a lie now. This is no, she hasn't true. said you've done anything at the moment, She Kat. started it. No, it was because of you. I 
I just done that and she just told off me. That's how because it started. Because she did draw a hat on my mum and I told you not to. This is the playground of six-year-olds. They're almost honing their skills in the, in the social currency of conflict, provocation, retaliation and insult. No, I don't like you. Who cares? She likes me. Don't have a nice combo. What do not combo means? Conversation. Yeah. It's mid morning and the children are bonding in the playground. Do you know what idiotic means? Do you? Hmm? Say it then. I will put you it. Do not tell the teacher. Do not. Idiot. I say idiotic means idiot. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Know what it actually means? F U K. F word. As they're now becoming interested and they're having contact with things that are of interest to adults, so you see those those adult themes beginning to enter into their play. I love Taylor Swift. Do you know Bad Blood? Yeah. Now we got problems, and I don't think we can solve them. Not a really big cut. Cos, baby, now we got bad blood. Hey! Guess what? Taylor Swift and Katy Perry actually punched both of themselves in the face. They are naturally interested yeah. in things that are of interest to adults. Yeah. Because that provides those things with a value. Um, when I grew up, I went to be a princess. Policeman? Will the police talk? If I can't be a princess, I would just have to go to university. Come down. <gasps> yeah! Ha! Giddy up, giddy up. <laughs> I feel older. I want to be a nurse because I really like animals. What do you want to be when you're grown up, Beatrice? I just want to be a normal person. Hello! This is we're back with Sky News. Du, 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 du. Stop <laughs> it! I'm trying to eat over here! With me, Elvin, and what's his name? Beatrice. Nom, 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 nom. Sorry, sorry, I'm just having a snack. Okay. Oh, he's Sky News. Yeah, this is a Sky News oh, programme. So they're actually enacting how events are communicated in the adult world. So, what was... There was, there was a train attack on, the, on a French train to Paris. They got the knife and got the gun and stabbed them. And they even killed the conductor. Yeah. Woo! Good sad news, isn't it? International terrorism is now becoming a theme of, of play among oh, six-year-olds. I'm not sure I want to think about that. No, but it does mean it's important to be talking to children about these things so they understand the significance of the event and the value that adults attach to them. Because they know about it. They know and about it and they're talking about it with each other. Yes. Oh, have you seen that blow up in China? Yeah. Because that was on the news before on the telly. There was like a blow up in China. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and uh, like lots of people died. Next plane attack in Surrey on the S21. They don't know why, but they're going to find out. I'm going to hand over to Tay at the S21 that's been closed off. Here you go, Tay. Yay. So let's just watch that plane for a sec. What are you doing? We're doing some work. Cash, get out of the way. You'll be filmed. We're on set now. <laughs> what I love about Beatrice is even when you're playing, you've got to follow the rules. She's, she's very structured. She likes it just yeah. so. Excuse me, can I get another piece of orange? Yeah. I think that Beatrice is attracted to types of play which are quite structured yeah. and Elvin yeah. does provide yeah, that sort of structure. And he's a very, in a very friendly way and yeah. a very explicit way, so it's very clear. On the London Underground, there's planning to be more strikes than ever. No. But that's not true. It's in one sky news we're pretending. 
It's because I know really about the underground. Can we on telly boys? No, Ron Skynews, can you move out of the way we're being filmed? Ron, move out of the way we're doing. Thank you, Tay. Let me hand over to Beatrice. Uh, well. What do you think would happen if we had no rules? Everything would start getting really crazy. Beatrice is an only child and lives in South London with Mum Nancy, Dad Wallace and Dog Daisy. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, blast off. There is a structure to her day and her, her week and she knows how she fits into the house. When I've done a little mistake, I get oops. Stickers. She'll set herself a task and she'll get really absorbed in it for hours and Radio 4 will be on in the background and she'll just be really focused on reading or assembling a robot or something like that. Mm. Don't put your hands up in the air, silly Billy. She does have very meaningful relationships with the people around her and she is a bit like a sponge as well. She kind of soaks up some of their personality traits. Yeah. If she's playing with a child where they're really enjoying doing something which is kind of borderline naughty, then Beatrice, <laughs> oh, yes, well, I have to have a go at this because look how a great time they're having, you know. So, so she'll join in. Do I look cool? <laughs> Inside, the children are getting ready for a special day. Elfie. Yeah? It's Eloise's birthday today. <laughs> Look at Eloise's cake. Do you like it? I really want to eat it right now. And um, my mum made it last night. This is not just a cake. This is Beatrice's cake, and that changes the dynamic. It's for Eloise. It's for Eloise. Eloise can't have all of that. Hey, hey, hey! Don't touch it. Don't touch do this. Do it. Do it. Don't, don't touch these bits. No, no. Leave <laughs> this, all of you. No! Don't touch it. There's a sign on the front saying, "Do not touch." No! No! <laughs> It's the strength with which she sticks to a rule. You know, I'd leave the crown jewels in Beatrice's hands. You know, she knows what's right and wrong, what she's doing and what she's not doing. And that sometimes does put her at odds with her peers who are testing or flexing the boundaries all the time. You can look at the cake, but don't lick it. I think it's important to be able to break the rules sometimes because it's quite difficult to ever do anything unique in life if you don't break conventions. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Ah, 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 ah. There's a reason why naughtiness can be so enjoyable. And if you're always following the rules, you don't experience that. Phew! It's the afternoon. And whilst Beatrice and some of the children are outside with the teachers, <laughs> Layla, Caitlin and the others are preparing party food. Um, this cake is yummy! Mm, mm, mm. Oh, Layla! This is not going to end well. Oh, that's a serious... Oh, you're oh. not going to stick that back. Oh, you'll have to eat it. <laughs> oh, what I want to do is eat the whole cake. I might just try a little icing yeah. more. Beatrice is not here to protect it, and this is what she, this is exactly what she was afraid of. Mm. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you something? Did you know that I actually oh, ate one of the cake. little cupcakes? I ate one of these. Look. <gasps> there was a cupcake there. We're gonna know. And guess what? I'm gonna tell. No. Oh. I'll tell that you ate it. I'm gonna tell them that you ate it. 
I was just joking. Okay, so she immediately tested that reaction and quickly she knows it's going to impact her relationship, so she backs yeah, away. It has made Layla very aware of her vulnerability, though, yes. hasn't it? Yes, yes. Maybe someone naughty did it, like me. I'm naughty. <laughs> Sometimes you go, naughty. No, I didn't do it, though. What's the naughtiest thing somebody could do? Um... Steal something from the teacher or steal a whole house. <laughs> Alright guys. Um guys there's this bit of a round hole on the icing of made the that. cake. Um Layla, do you know what happened? No, I don't know who did it. We never saw who took that bit. Caitlin, have you got anything you need to tell me about the cake right now? Totally no idea. Yeah. I have totally no idea. No. All right, so if somebody did do that on purpose, what should the consequences be? They don't get any birthday cake. You think so? Like a million chores. A couple, not a million. Then 75. 75. 75 chores. That's too much. Is it too much, do you think, Layla? Um, I maybe think five is. chores. Maybe five. And maybe five. Yes. Five chores? Yeah. Yes. Well, maybe we could just forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> OK, there's the tell, OK? OK. Maybe the cupcake did fall off on the floor and then someone did accidentally step on it and that cupcake did stay on their train. <gasps> That's oh. you. Yeah, not me. Uh, not me. I think Caitlin's basically committed now to this cover-up. Yes. Because she's producing some details of her own as to what might have happened. But so I imagine Layla's feeling a bit safer. But it is forging something between Layla and Caitlin that, as we see the week develop, it may continue. And it may also be on the bottom of someone's shoe and we should rule that out as a possibility. Not me. Wait, that's play don't know. Not no. me. Not me. No, not me. Make a story first, me. Hi there, what's your name? I'm Clara Rapunzel. It's halfway through the week. Caitlin is the last to arrive, and the others are already playing games. Ah! She screamed! Ah! You are not a baby, you are a witch! A wicked witch! Can I go after you? Yeah. Look how high I'm going already. Don't go too high. You might get sick. Are you OK? Oh. Good. Eloisa is keen to reintroduce a favourite game from last week. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Not the kiss case again. Not the kiss case again. Good. Oh, now you're really kidding me. Cash, 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 cash. Guys, 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 guys! Guys, I think we're in big trouble now. Eloisa! What are you scared of, Eloisa? Nothing. I'm a superhero. Although Eloisa can be a little bit mischievous, she's got a fantastic imagination and she's bright. You're looking at somebody with very strong social skills. To orchestrate a group, you need to understand the motivations and the needs of every individual within it. Beatrice and Poppy, help me. You have to um, lie on top of them and I have to make sure they stay still and then I have to kiss them off. OK? Shall we call this trap Operation Kiss? OK. OK. She understands that Beatrice appreciates being given some very clear directives, and that's the strategy she uses. Beatrice, go! Go, go, go! 
We like trying to kiss all the boys. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> I kissed one boy, which is Cash. No, it's my boyfriend. An hour into the morning, and Caitlin still hasn't joined in with any of the group's games. It's difficult when we arrive late at something where everybody else has been there for some time. You feel that everyone knows more about what's going on than you. It's like arriving at a party and the conversation's already in full swing. Caitlin can look around her and she can see that actually these games are quite well established. She doesn't know what the rules are. It's a little bit more difficult to get involved. Caitlin? Whoa. Why are you sad? Because I did miss my monkeys. Your monkeys? My teddy bear monkeys. Are you also sad because you have no one to play with? No, it's because there's no more hula hoops. Hey. Do you want to play with me? Okay, what well, do you want to play? <laughs> the sister game, but I won't play if you let me be the oldest. You are the oldest. Okay, so come on. Sister, we've got to go to school and I've got to take you. Can you tell me about your friends, Leila? I have one friend that's my best friend, but I don't know if I should be her best friend because she bosses me around. Layla lives in South London with Mum Jackie, Dad Deji and little sister Suri. Look up. I would like to be probably a makeup artist. Ideally, I'd like her to be a strong black woman, scientist or physician or, you know, one of the professions where there's not many black women. But I think looking at her, she's going more towards the creative performance career. Come on, swing on more vines. Side to side, whoosh, weedy whoosh. Layla's always been interested in just having one strong friendship where it's very intense, very close. And then that friendship develops quite strongly. Caitlin has decided to form a girls' club. You have to join the club today if you want to be in the club. That's rule number one. If the head one of the club, which is me, asks them to go to a meeting, they go to a meeting. Assistant um, the one, I'll get the hideout ready and you tell everyone if you want to join our club, join it today or never, OK? okay. If you need me, I'll just be in the clubhouse. Do you want to be in the girls' club? What okay. is it called? I don't know. Um, do you want to join the club or not? What club? Girls' club. <laughs> no. Would you like to be in the girls' club? No, thanks. Would you like to be in the girls' club? No. No one wants to be in the club. So, Poppy, we'll show you around our club garden and our clubhouse. Come on, let's go. Being in a club makes you feel special. It makes you feel special because some people can't be in the club. So it's really about exclusivity. Hi, girls. Hi. Do you want to help us get ready? Oh, yeah. You don't need to talk like that. Well, I can if I want. But normally we just talk our normal voices. Yeah. That's a good idea. That's not your normal okay. voice. Okay. 
But yeah. if you want to join the club, you're never coming out of it. But you see, Layla, I'm going home to Plymouth, so I won't be in it anymore. Come on, we gotta go. We don't need to go anywhere, we just stay here. In the garden and get it ready. Yeah, we don't go anywhere. We don't even go over there. Hey. Are boys allowed in the clubhouse? Mm -mm. This clubhouse is for girls only. She says that I'm her assistant. Or something like that. Poppy has decided to focus on her hula hooping rather than attend the inaugural girls' club meeting. I don't think Poppy wants to play anymore. Why would no one like the clubhouse? I think it's great. It's amazing. Just Let's go and go, Poppy. Bye. She wants to sleep the clubhouse. Maybe we can sort this out all day. Poppy? Yeah? Why did you want to sleep the clubhouse? We, I mean, we let you hula hoop. Well, because... I wanted it to be a game. But a club, it isn't a game. A club is a real thing. That's why I don't want to be joining in. Poppy, we're just too old to play those games for Aunt Beale. We're too old to play them. Train driver. Okay. We will shortly be arriving at Hern Hill. We're not playing. Okay. Because that's games, but little kids play. Right? That means that I'm playing by myself. Come on, assistant. We need a private meeting. The next station is Hell Hill. In the last few days, Beatrice has been spending more time with Eloisa and less time with Elvin. Beatrice is my best friend and I like, like playing with her. And also, these are my new socks. This is a real departure for Beatrice because she just doesn't normally play with things in this way. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, we drink. <laughs> I like Eloisa because she is crazy. Good crazy though. Good crazy. I'm dizzy. No, 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 no. I'm dizzy. So I need to poo. <laughs> she likes toilet humour. <laughs> Eloisa. We both say I need to poo. I need to poo. It always amazes me the, the effects children can have on each other, so how one personality can yeah. really shift. Because Beatrice it's, would never normally do anything no, like that, would no, she? No. It's ready, it's pouring. I need a pool. It's raining, it's pouring. We no, need a pool. I'm not ready yet. People have an effect on us, and Elvin has such a calming effect on Beatrice, whereas Eloisa is kind of... Mm. Uh, Pushing her to do yeah. things you'd never normally think about. But that's actually quite a good thing for Beatrice. <laughs> Elvin, when Beatrice plays with some of the girls, happy. So Beatrice has more friends. So you don't feel sad? No. I need you guys to stay in your chairs, not to move a muscle. It's the end of the day, and the children have been set a challenge. So place it on your head. So remember, staying in your seats. If you manage to stay in your seat and keep the beanbag on your head while Phil and I are out, then you 
we'll get. I love chocolate coins. Nice. Anyway, chocolate makes your teeth go rotten and fall out. The game starts in three, two, one, go. Stay there. Yeah. bag on yeah. your head. It sounds like Beatrice was the one who stayed in the seat and she didn't touch it with her hands. Would you Did agree with that? Do we get any chocolate coins? Do we? No. Well, it was, I was pretty clear about what you had to do to get a chocolate coin. Mm. 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 Tell you gave it. me one. Have one. Uh, Beatrice, can I have one? One time she gave me one. Thanks. How come Eloisa gets one? Best friends. What? No, you're not. Yes, sir. Yeah, but I thought I was Beatrice's best friend. It's not fair. Elvin is my friend. Second best friend. Me and Beatrice shared. All right, guys. It is home time. It's the children's last day together. Oh no! My hairstyle is getting badder and bad. Well, Mama, I'm going to make the perfect potion for you. Caitlin is taking a break from Girls Club to play one of Poppy's games, Fairy Tale Hairdressers. Okay, you make the perfect potion and I'll try to design my hair. In friendships, we always have to compromise, we have to negotiate. So it's really important um, to be able to learn to do that. Do you think this hairstyle is good? Yes, it's fabulous. Oh, very good. Do you think you're a bossy person? Sometimes. Hey, um, can I be in your club? Okay. Pinky promise. Next, Beatrice. Yes, Beatrice. That's why you are sitting in this. 
For their final task, the children have been split into two groups. Beatrice is on Team Stardust and Elvin is on Team Winners. OK. Each team will have a turn to act out or draw the word for the rest of their team to guess what it is. Yeah. All right, so over there. All right, are you ready? So team Stardust, your time starts now. Move your head so they can see. Butterfly. Yep. That's one point for Team Stardust. Not because of my awesome drawing. All right, well done. All right, so no point for that one. Loser. Monkey. Turtle. A pig. <laughs> with the scores tied, it's Beatrice's turn with the word worm. Person uh, jumping in the puddle. No. <laughs> <laughs> Guy in the boat. No, 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 no. And time is up! Oh. What was it? It was warm. Oh. I thought it was like warm, but it... But Oh, it was actually warm. Silly me. Oh! <laughs> Don't worry, Beatrice. <laughs> it was I. <laughs> it's very difficult not to feel happy in a game when your competitors fail. And we know this from behavioural studies, we know it from brain imaging studies, that when your competitor fails, you get a reward response. That is going to stimulate some emotion. We're not going to win. And team winners have six points! <laughs> We win, we win. <laughs> you lose, you lose. We win, we win. Oh, Johnny, go. Yes. No. They lost. Yeah. They lost. Losers. Yeah. Really really Maybe he was just celebrating. But sometimes celebrating can hurt someone's feelings. Do you? I just noticed, and a couple of the people in the other team who were a bit upset about losing. I could have been because of the way that the way that you were celebrating. They were like this. Tay team lost. Tay team lost. Susan, stop lying. You just want to get me in trouble. No, we don't. Yeah. Stop lying. You guys are trying to get us in trouble. No, we're not. Yes, you were. No, we're not. Losers like that. They went like this. This is how they went losers. Losers. What do you think makes a good friend? Mm, being nice and caring for each other. Sorry, Tay. Sorry, Tay. Book. Yeah, Minecraft. Yeah, come on. It's fun. Maybe we could uh, you know, make a Minecraft world. <gasps> yes! <laughs> That's a great idea, Beatrice. Come on, let's go tell Kate. Come on. Oh.
naked microphone. Yes, mine got. It is really impressive to see Elvin's emotional competence in this situation. He understands how Beatrice feels. He understands that he needs to make an apology sincerely. And he's also able to think about what sort of activity they could both be involved in that would make Beatrice feel better and would repair the relationship that's been jeopardized. I'll miss you, Beatrice. And I'll miss you. Hey. Being able to listen to the children in this naturalistic sort of a way, you begin to understand how incredibly important the social relationships are for, for their learning and how much they learn from each other. <laughs> it's been fantastic watching and hearing these six-year-olds independently making sense of the world around them. And it's been a real privilege to witness that. <laughs>